Okay, this is a video on how to put sound on a Cortex. Um, this first program that I've uh, found, or I don't know if I wrote this or found it, um, but it will go through all the pre-programmed sounds that are on, or that are in Robot C. So there's a sound, beep, beep, a blip, a downward tone, upward tone, low buzz, fast up tone, short blip, and then a sound exception, and then a low buzz short. And then I have some weights between them, so it plays those basic uh, sound commands. And then if I look at my uh, my setup, my setup's pretty straightforward here. I had the speaker uh, plugged into the Cortex in the SP port. So if you look underneath um, the digital 1 through 12, you'll see an SP port uh, that's there. And you can see that. Uh, is plugged in and then on the side of the speaker there's actually a little volume knob that you can control um, and then you have to have a battery plugged in as well so I downloaded my program uh, to this so I'm gonna again download it and then you'll hear the tones that play So there's, there's the different tones, and if you wanted to just play one at a time, you could comment the rest of them out, play it, increase your weight, uh, so that way you know that it's finished playing, and those are basic sounds. So again, if you need to copy that, you can. I did have a start button uh, plugged in, which I'll probably plug in here in just a minute, uh, but it's not for this particular program. So that's how you play basic sounds on there. Now let's say you want to create your own songs or your own sounds. So this one is set up where um, there are different functions. So this is Beethoven fifth, and then Hall of the Mountain King. And if you scroll on down, you've got Frere Jaca. And then you've got basically in your task main that it's going to play each of those functions and then wait and play the next one. Now this is set up using the play tone um, function where you can pick a frequency and a duration that it will play that tone, and then it waits a certain duration before it plays the next tone. So I'll download this robot, this code so you can see it. And again, I found this code, I think on the Robot Seed blog is where I found it um, as an option. But again, you can look up frequencies for each of the notes, and then you can do quarter notes, uh, eighth notes, half notes, whatever, with those tones, and then some rest between them uh, when you play your song. So here's what it sounds like. So that's Beethoven's fifth. And then that's the end of the program. So that's how you can create your own uh, basically MIDI files with a frequency and a duration. Finally is how do you create uh, your own custom sound file, um, WAV file. So that's what this program does here, this last one. Um, it basically has a couple other functions that are utilized. One of them is called Play Sounds. Uh, Play Sounds allows you to mute uh, the system or not. So we can then, um, you know, basically say that that's true. We want to play that sound. And here we're going to say true. Um, or we can kind of try to mute the, um, I think what I was trying to do here is mute the speaker until you press a start button. And the same thing here. That's why these were false um, on those. But if you look, so this one... Um, waits for a start button to be pressed, so it sits in a while loop while it's not pressed. When it's pressed, it says, okay, if the start button was pressed, 
and now make the play sounds true so it unmutes it and then it's going to play this sound file called chewy.wave and then it says while the b sound active b sound active is a function that returns a true if the sound file is continually playing basically it sits in this little mini while loop while it's playing so you can't move on and then start a new sound file until it's finished and then it does the same thing and it plays another sound this one's called wookie1.wave so I'm going to show you how do you set up a sound file to the proper format um, to use this um, to then and then how to download these wave files to your cortex um, because you have to do that you have to put them through the file management tool you have to put them on the cortex first uh, before you can use them so <coughs> let's go through that process first thing you want to do is you want to um, download this audacity uh, program it's free um, easy to use, um, but then what you're going to do is you're going to open up a file. So I'm going to do an R2D2, uh, this one, so you know it's a different one. Um, so I'm going to look at this R2D2A. I'm going to make a copy of the file first, and then when I play it, you can hear that that's the R2D2 sound that's there. We need to resave this in a new format that the Cortex can read. So the first thing we do is we want to make sure it's mono. So sometimes our files are stereo, so we'll want to make them mono. And then we want to change the project rate to 8,000 hertz. And that reduces the, um, the file size, I believe, by doing that. We're going to go in, and then we're going to export this file. And I'm going to call this um, R2D2 um, sounds. I want to pick other compressed files and go into options and change this to a WAV file with an unsigned 8-bit PCM. So I'm not 100% sure what this is, but this is my research found that this is the file type that needs to be done. Um, so that's what we pick. We click on OK. Uh, we're going to click on Save. And then you can click on OK there. And now I should have that WAV file. Um, saved on my computer. Okay, now that I have that uh, WAV file saved on my computer, again, I can go back into Robot C, and now when I press the start button, instead of doing Chewy.Wave, I'm going to do that R2D2 sounds.wave file. And again, I can find this. And I should see that file right there, r2d2sounds.wave file. So now that I've called it, I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of this code. So, um, so we're just playing the single sound file. And it will just loop forever here. Let's make sure that, uh, that we can compile. I might have an extra, yeah. So if I do a fixed formatting, I've got an extra curly here that I've got to get rid of. Extra brace. So there we go. So now it's going to, whenever I push that button, it's going to then play those R2D2 sounds. Um, but I have to then go into and put this sound file on the Cortex itself. So this is under Advanced Tools, File Management. And now I can upload or download a file to the system. So right now it shows me what files are on the Cortex. So this was Play Songs, which is what I did, what I downloaded last time. But now I want to download this WAV file. So I'm going to scroll down until I get the R2D2 Sounds WAV file. Hit Open. And now you can see that it's now put that WAV file on here. And if you look at the size, it's 9.57K you don't have a whole lot of free space on the Cortex. Um, so when you put a couple set different sound files, it, it chews it up pretty quickly. I'm going to download this file to the robot. And again, if I go back into the advanced tools under File Manager, we'll now see Play Sound File along with that R2D2 sounds. So there they are. So here's my program, and here's my WAV file that is on my cortex currently. So when I now use my debugger window, I'm going to re-download to robot. 
so I can pull open the debugger window. Now it's waiting for that start button to be pressed. Okay, so we're going to press the button. You can see that it goes in and it plays that R2D, uh, R2D2 sounds.wav file. And then if I wanted to play a different file, so I could change this. I think one of them is called Wookie one that I have. But again, I'm going to need to go into Advanced Tools, File Management, and I'm going to download the Wookie one file. And that's a file that I already uh, messed with. So again, you can see that's a 22K file. And I need to re-download this program because I changed that. And when I hit start this time, so again, waiting for my switch. So now I have the Wookiee one wave file. So I hope that helps. Um, sound is really fun for projects. Again, it's a way to push those students that, uh, that finish their projects a little bit early, you know, for $10 for the speaker module to go in and add custom sound files and uh, play songs or whatever uh, for their particular projects. Kind of fun. Um, so hope, hopefully that helps. Uh, again, have a great day.